Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Dima, and I am a software engineer intern uh, at Software Mansion. I was working uh, on Membrane. And today, I'll try to introduce you to uh, multimedia processing and to Membrane Framework. Uh, we'll do that uh, on a simple example. Uh, the idea of this example is uh, to be really simple, as simple as possible, and to capture natively video from the device's camera and convert it to uh, HLS stream. Uh, and I'll, to, I'll try to be as, um, I'll, I'll try to put things out as simple as possible, just for everybody uh, to understand and to be able to uh, catch uh, this, uh, this slide. So first of all, uh, one, more, one more time, uh, we'll capture the video, we'll convert, we'll do all this stuff, the interesting stuff which is uh, going behind the scenes, uh, and just stream it out using, using HLS. So what is HLS? Uh, HLS is an HTTP-based adaptive bitrate streaming communication protocol uh, developed by Apple. Uh, it's just, uh, it can traverse any firewall because it just uses uh, the simple HTTP uh, traffic. And uh, you can just uh, stream your content using the uh, content delivery network. And this is the benefit of HLS. And uh, there, in this slide, you can see uh, how HLS works. You just capture the video and, and, uh, and an audio. Uh, you encode and segment uh, these streams. Then you can distribute your, your, like your files uh, by, divide, by division these files into some chunks. And these divided chunks can later be served to a client. Uh, so we have a playlist where we define this, like, uh, uh, this, med this media types, and we have some segments. Uh, simply put, this, uh, media play this master playlist just defines, for example, uh, different video qualities. We can have some cellular video, we can have some Wi-Fi video, we can have full HD videos, and each of these uh, media playlists can have its own media segments. And this segment, this video, uh, this media segments, uh, are just some files, some, for example, two or five seconds uh, long videos or audios, uh, which can then be just served uh, using just HTTP. So the process, the pipeline, or the um, stream that we would like to, uh, to proceed is the following. First, we have the source. In the source, we just capture the video. Then we have a pixel converter, because uh, we'll describe it later in more detail. But now, the source just captures the video, pixel converter converts the pixels, changes the format of the, um, of the images that we receive uh, from our camera, for example. Then we need to encode this and parse. I'll show and describe later what is encoding and what is parsing. And, and then we can just use HLS to divide these encoded files and stream it out uh, using, using, using HLS. So, uh, source is the simplest part of it. We just captured this video. We got raw video frames. Depending on uh, operation, operation system, we can have uh, an RGB files uh, like RGB format or some others. Uh, and now I'll tell you what is an RGB. I'll try to tell you what is an RGB. Uh, because uh, the converter, after we captured the video, we need to convert it. Because uh, our, some popular formats use uh, I420, not an RGB. RGB is just red, green, and blue. We have 24 bits for each uh, pixel. And we can have uh, as many pixels as we want. But it's too much. Because of that, uh, and because of uh, people who perceive wider brightness range than color range, uh, we don't need to store uh, so much data on colors. We can store just the brightness and some blue and red colors. For that, this format was like created, and it reducts sites from 24 bits to 12 bits. Uh, yeah, and 
like there we can have we can see a picture uh, where the first the first one is just the real image the second one is the uh, only luminance uh, brightness and then we have a blue and red uh, which are stored just in two bits uh, and it's uh, single every pixel has like this uh, this amount of bits uh, after we have source we have converter we have converted our source like our pixel formats we need to encode it what is in encoding in the media like uh, encoding is just taking the raw video in uh, some pixel format and converting it like for describing some dependencies between some frames because video is just a sequence of these frames uh, by frame, I mean just images. Video is a sequence of images. And encoding can do some video compression because not, e not every image is different from each other. There are some like, mm, there are some dependencies. For example, uh, this, the third frame can depend on the uh, previous or the next frames. And because of that, we can just compress this, not to store like each image by itself, but compress it. Uh, and this is what encoder function is. Uh, it just converts raw video to some digital, to, to some digital files, uh, so it's not saved as individual images, but as a fluid video with some dependencies uh, between these images uh, and some uh, complicated mathematical uh, convert, uh, compression. And this provides us uh, to some video compression standard. Uh, this is what H264 uh, is. Uh, it's like, mm, it has three types of frames. And it's uh, pretty common to have three types of frames. The first type is uh, iframe. It's just an image which has all of the information needed to show. For example, when you have this image, you can just simply put it on the screen. Uh, we have B frames. Uh, these frames uh, predict uh, its state on the basis of the previous frames. As you can see in this picture, uh, P frames only show on the past frames, on the past E frames or some other frames. And we have B frames, which can use both previous and future frames to predict its state. So when you have some sequence of frames, you can display each frame like simultaneously. You need to display like this frame and the other frame, and because of that, you can have some data to display, like, you, have some, you can have some future data, and you can use this data to, um, to just uh, compress this, uh, this image. And this is what encoder does. It just converts our sequence of images to this uh, compression standard. The next thing is a video parser. Video parser is uh, responsible for generating metadata and timestamps based on the specified frame rate, for example. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, generating metadata uh, is just uh, putting to each frame, uh, for example, the time where it, sh it can be shown. Uh, if you have 30 frames per second, it means that when we receive the stream, each frame is like marked with this, uh, this timestamp and uh, the browser or the client can have like uh, can easily understand where and when to put this frame, and this is what uh, the function of uh, video parser is. Uh, there we can have some parameters like um, to deliver some more frames or less frames, but it's not really important now. Uh, and the second and this, the last part of our pipeline. Uh, is just HLS sync. It performs payloading and muxing. It's not really important now what it is. Uh, and it just generates these uh, playlists and persists them in the storage. So it divides this chunk into some smaller chunks of the video and, is, can, like, and puts uh, these uh, playlists uh, and manifest files and then they can be served. And there, we have a cool slide uh, which tells how membrane works. Uh, 
and for what like membrane was created. Uh, membrane has uh, more than 178 packages and plugins to help you do all of the things that I've mentioned above. And the like, level of understanding uh, which I've provided is enough to use, this, uh, to use these elements. Membrane can be used as an abstraction to multimedia processing. Uh, we don't need to understand all the um, details of how the multimedia is processed under the hood. We just need to understand that one thing is coming after another thing, and we need to pass some parameters for it to work properly. Uh, we can gain all of the benefits of the functional programming because Membrane Framework is written in Elixir, which is based on Erlang OTP, and because of that, we can just convert our vision, like these five uh, bullet points, to just pipeline, and simply perform all of the action using this simple pipe pipeline. Uh, so Membrane, uh, going into some detail, Membra membrane has elements, which are just this uh, source, converter, encoder, parser, and many others. This is just elements, uh, this is just membrane elements. Membrane has input and output paths, which are just uh, uh, capabilities, define, uh, they just define a type of data that this element can receive, and the and the type of data which this element can like output. And because, because of that, and the last part of membrane is pipelines. Uh, pipelines are just the connection of these elements. So we define the order uh, by which these elements uh, interact with each other, uh, like pass some data and so on. So membrane just simply put has four uh, big uh, parts, big like big um, parts that it has. Uh, it's just elements, parts, uh, some capabilities, and pipelines. Capabilities are just like specs for an Elixir uh, function. Uh, that's it. And I'll show you now uh, how easy the like this vision can be converted uh, converted to to the to the code. Uh, so, we have a live coding session now. Mm. So I'll open uh, an editor, and you should see the simple application, uh, Elixir application, which starts uh, the pipeline, which I defined there. Uh, it just, uh, in future versions, start link and pipeline play, uh, start link will do the uh, playing, will do the converting to the state uh, of playing. Uh, but for us now, it's really important that just pipeline play uh, will uh, initiate the handle in it and uh, will, uh, will link all of the elements that we define in children and in the order that is defined in links. So all of uh, our work there is just to define these elements and link them together. So, uh, first element that we saw is just source. So let's define it, source. Uh, it's membrane camera capture plugin uh, without parameters. And that's it, that's the first element. Uh, the second element, uh, according to the presentation, uh, was uh, was a converter to the format I420. Uh, so let's define it. Converter, converter uh, to the, uh, it will be membrane uh, FFmpeg, because membrane under the hood use just, uh, uses just FFmpeg. Uh, in some cases, uh, S for scale, pixel format converter, and there we need to pass uh, format, which is uh, I4420. Yep, so we have our converter. And the next part is uh, encoder and parser. So encoder, uh, it's 
a membrane uh, encoder. No, FFmpeg encoder, FFmpeg encoder. And there we need to specify the profile of the encoder. Uh, I've told about parameters and that you need to know, you need, you need to know what things you are using. Uh, so uh, what is profile? Uh, profile baseline is just a profile which tells our encoder uh, the way that it needs to encode the video. In this particular case, we need to ignore B frames because uh, the usage of it will be in browser and we won't be able to like to look into the future because B frames uh, are just using the frames from the future. And we can not always have them. But we just use baseline profile which ignores these frames uh, by default. And there, then we need to implement our parser uh, it will be uh, membrane uh, h24ffmpeg parser. And there we need to pass uh, additional parameters. Uh, it's a frame rate. Frame rate uh, will be 30 to 1 frame, I guess. That's the way it works. Uh, alignment. Uh, will be AU. It means that uh, we'll transport one frame per uh, NAL. NAL is the unit of transportation. Uh, and it also need, need, is needed by uh, the browser to work to every, for everything to work correctly. Uh, let's put it that way. And uh, we need to attach this. Uh, no, let's just put it true. And I want to underline that this, is, that this part is like this parameters are not just important. You can watch, you can mm, just simply search the repos and all the way they are used pretty much the same. And if you don't want to go into the detail, if you don't need to go into the detail, then you can just use, this that, use, it, use them that way. And the last part, um, according to the presentation, uh, was just our HLS, let's call it HLS. Uh, and it will be HLS sync bin because it just uses, it, it just doing, it just, it, do, it does payloading and muxing. And because of that, we can use the, uh, the sync bin uh, for it to be simpler. Uh, we just use membrane, uh, HTTP adaptive stream, and there's sync bin. And that's, aha. And there we need to uh, specify the uh, manifest module for it to be uh, HLS. So it will be just membrane, uh, HTTP adaptive streaming, stream and HLS. Uh, and we need to specify the storage. The storage is just a direction of the, f of the files, of the output files. And uh, we need to call uh, it like output. It will be membrane storage, I guess. Uh, yes, membrane uh, file storage, storages, file storage. And there we pass directory uh, output. Yes. And that's pretty much it. So we have our children, we have our elements. And now we need to connect these elements into a pipeline uh, for everything to work. And that's really easy. We just uh, put link. There we pass uh, an atom source. And we have a pipeline. So we pass our source to the converter. 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 Then we pass it to uh, the encoder, I'll copy just, we'll pass it to the encoder, we'll pass it to parser, uh, and we just need to uh, pass it to the uh, HLS sync, but in this part it's not that easy because HLS sync some, uh, has some parameters uh, on its paths, and we need to uh, use uh, something called via in, and there we just uh, specify that it's an input path and specify its uh, options. Options. Uh, 
we need to uh, sh specify that encoding will be H264. Uh, and we can specify the track name there. Track name. Uh, my track name. Uh, and we pass it to uh, our HLS. Yep, that's, that's it. Uh, so, uh, we have our elements. We've connected our elements. It's just a simple pipeline uh, from the source data goes uh, straight out to, uh, to our HLS, which then uh, will generate the, uh, the output file. And we can test it out, how it works. So we just uh, go and run mix uh, run. And there we need to have an output data. After some time, it should appear if everything is done correctly. Cool, it's not working. <laughs> I don't know why. Should, probably. Mm, so we have source, converter, encoder, parser. Uh, everything looks fine. I'll just allow myself to uh, check out to the previous um, branch. I have no idea why it's not working. Uh, but simply put, we have our camera capture, like source, we have our converter, we have our encoder, we have our parser, which has a frame rate alignment and attach uh, nailers, uh, and we have our sync, like sync bin. And we have these links. Let's uh, check it out uh, whether this version is working. Probably yes. No, it is still not working, and I think that the problem is uh, with this HDMI because it, it like it works, it doesn't crash, but it can capture the camera. So I try to unpin, and yeah, and then it works. <laughs> so it wasn't my fault, completely. I've done everything right. Uh, you need to trust me that. Now, the camera is capturing the video, uh, and you can see yourself there. And I'll connect one more time and just uh, push it off uh, for you to see uh, everything. Probably you should see you now. Yes. So, uh, we've recorded some video. Uh, the problem is that uh, this uh, adapter just uh, somehow captures my camera and is not allowing me to use it. I don't know why. It wasn't tested. But uh, we can see that our index file is generated. Our track, our index file, is pointing to our track, which is first track. Let's go to the first track. And this track has some segments. He's pointing out for all of the segments. It shows uh, the length of the segments, uh, that's it. And it shows the name of these segments, like M4S. We won't be able to open this file, but it's just the video that we are looking for. So now we need to open this video. I've wrote previously a simple HTML script, which uses a HLS.js library to uh, just what, what this script does, he just asks the server, like each time, each x seconds, and gets these uh, tracks. First of all, he gets the index, the index file, the index m 3 u 8 Then, by the by this index, he understands the quality. He understands the quality of the files that he needs, and he just asks the server to give him this uh, this these files. And we just we can use a simple Python server, Python file server, uh, HTTP server, which will serve our files, 
So if we ask for a file, we get the file. And then go to the browser, uh, go to our local host uh, stream, I guess. Yeah, and we have this video uh, which we've recorded when I've just uh, plucked out the HDMI. And probably you will see yourself in some time, I think. Yes, so it works. And I think that's pretty much it on how it works. Uh, let's come back to the presentation. So is everything clear? Okay, uh, I'm glad that everything is clear. Let's go to the last slide. Probably I've had something there. No, nope, nothing. Uh, so I think that by the end of my like speech, uh, not the most successful one, but uh, you've understand how this membrane works, uh, how it's easy to uh, having some small knowledge on the media, uh, which I possess. Uh, you can just use uh, everything that membrane provides to you, and you and it works. It just works, and it's really easy to implement everything. So that's probably it for me. Thanks a lot.